Hello everyone, this is Rafael Lopez, product developer for ProBoat. Today I want to go over servicing and maintenance of the solid drive shaft in the 23-inch Riverjet jet boat. There's been some questions and concerns in regards to the instructions. They are quite lengthy, as you can see there, um, about 17 steps total. The people have been put off a little bit by this uh, instructions here and the length of the instructions. So I'm gonna go through it real quick and show that there really isn't much to it. I just wanted to be as thorough as possible when I wrote those instructions. Uh, I'm a very literal, literal person, so for me it helps to uh, have as much information as possible, make sure that I don't miss any steps. Didn't want to do it just with pictures. So we'll get started and I'll go step by step. Uh, I'll kind of paraphrase some steps here. I'm not gonna read completely through every step, but you'll see that every step that's in here, once you read the instructions, is what I'm gonna to cover today. So we'll go ahead and get started. First thing we'll do is pull off the silicone line off that brass nipple. Then we'll go ahead and loosen up the 1.5 millimeter grub screws with a 1.5 driver uh, and get those loosened up there. Then we wanna go ahead and loosen up the ball end side of those linkage rods, or steering and trim. I like to put screws back together with nuts when possible, that way I know what goes where. This one is captured, so we don't have to worry about using a pair of pliers to hold it, to get it loose. But I will put it back in a couple threads just to keep it safe there. Okay, so now we can go ahead and pull these out. Uh, I like to keep them separated, even though they're the same. I like to go right on right, left on left. That tells me exactly what I'm working with there. So the next thing we need to do is we need to use a two millimeter hex to um, get the pump housing off. So I'll be using my drill just for time saving purposes. And when you're pulling these out, you don't want to push. You want to let this screw work itself out of the housing completely. You don't want to leave the screw hanging halfway off in there. Now, sometimes you'll get the nut retainer on the inside to come loose. This one I broke loose already in a previous service. Uh, they are attached in a way that they, they'll be held in place. Uh, and when I was saying you don't want to push on the screw, you can't pop these out, which will pop the nut out. The nut could go floating inside the boat there, go to turn the boat over, now the nut's lost. So just be careful when you're popping these out. If it does come out, just place it off to the side again, right? It's to the right side, so I'm gonna keep it on the right-hand side of where I'm working. Uh, the other one didn't come off, so it's not a big deal. So at this point, the pump is loose, but I don't wanna just pull on it, because it's gonna pull the bellows out. And since this transom is pretty thick, plus the thickness of the uh, inside of the pump housing and the outside of the pump housing, make this bellow a little bit hard to put on if I do pull it out. So you can grab the bellow and just kind of wiggle it through the hole as you pull on the housing. It will come out. Uh, same thing for the other side, just kind of maneuver it through the hole so it pushes out or it pulls out of the pump housing. Very easy to do. Nothing too much there. This one I can just grab and pull. It's not going to come out as long as I'm holding it. So the next thing we want to do is we want to take a two millimeter driver um, and loosen up this screw for the coupler. Now one thing I like to do before I remove the shaft is I like to take a Sharpie or a more permanent marker and just mark the inside there. That way I will know how far to push in the uh, solid shaft back into the coupler. I don't want to push it in too much because then it could hit the sides of the housing uh, or it could ride against the inside of the housing and potentially melt that. So we don't want to um, cause any friction in there. So at this point, I can go ahead and pull this out. 
This one I did lubricate before. I never ran it, so it does have some fresh grease in it. But it doesn't hurt to get some new grease in there. So at this point, we check for wear. It's normal to have a little bit of shine where the shaft is riding within the bushings of the stuffing tube. Go ahead and clean any excess grease. And as you can see there, I've got my Sharpie mark of where I uh, noted that that's how deep the shaft needs to go. So I've got my shaft. If I were servicing the impeller, this is where I would take a 5.5 millimeter driver, nut driver, loosen that up, pop the impeller out. You don't have to take the uh, washer or the metal washer. There's a metal washer that's keyed in there and there's another washer on the bottom, plastic washer. You can kind of see it there, kind of float around. So that just floats around. So take that off, pop that off, replace the impeller. Very simple to do. I'll go one step further. So this is the same process for removing the stuffing tube. Now for the stuffing tube, we do need to take the pump housing completely apart. Um, unless you want to save some time and be like me because I'm a little bit lazy when it comes to taking too many things apart. You could remove these two screws here. Uh, sorry, these the two screws here. Pop the motor out. Then go ahead and uh, reach in there with an L wrench. Take some time, loosen up the nut that's on the pump housing. Then of course what you would do is push the, and th these instructions are in there too, but again, I'm just paraphrasing since I'm already in here. Uh, you'd want to go ahead and push the shaft back through until it you can hear it hitting the side, the inside of the bushing. At that point, you'd go ahead and push. It would take the stuffing tube out with it. You'd go ahead and replace the stuffing tube, push it back in, um, tighten up that nut down there and that bolt that would pinch it, hold it back in place. So the main thing is once you remove the back of the nozzle, the shaft, then you can access anything else that you need to do. Uh, the only reason I would need to replace the stuffing tube is if I'm getting an excess of water coming in through the hole, regardless of how much grease I put in here. We have to remember one thing is that once this uh, once this housing is back on there, that's all pressurized in there with water. It's the same amount of force that's coming out of the jet nozzle. So if there is a lack of grease in there, the water will sh shoot back in through uh, the space in between this washer that we have on the back of the impeller and the pump housing, and it could potentially come inside your boat. So it's very important that you keep this filled with grease or at least greased up to where it's gonna uh, prevent the water from coming back into the hole. So if you have water in the hole and you can't find where it's coming from, pull that open. If the Once you pull your shaft out, if it's milky and white, it's the grease is broken down and it needs to be uh, serviced. So I'll get my dynamite marine grease pump. Go ahead and give it a couple pumps inside there. To, I like to do about three or so. And then I will take um, some grease and get it on this shaft. We don't need a whole ton of grease in there, but just get some on there. Okay, now tip that I like to do for pushing that shaft back in is I'll take a napkin and fold it up in a square, put it between Put it between the housing and the coupler and what that's going to do is it's going to catch whatever grease i push back in through there or is this place when i push the uh shaft back in so pushing that in as you can see the grease is already coming out so now i just have to align it properly and allow it to come out the other side it will displace a little bit more grease there it goes now now it's hitting the paper so now i can pull it out there's all that messy grease that would have gone everywhere else so we'll just get that out of the way. Clean up any excess grease that's inside or around the coupler. Push that shaft all the way through, find my flat spot, and then make sure that I'm as far as my black Sharpie mark that I put on there, and then tighten everything back up. Good to go. Now, if you wanted to put some Loctite on there, you could. Just remember that if you put Loctite on there, it's going to be a little difficult to break loose next time. If you're using just regular Allen wrenches, 
uh, just L wrenches, sorry, then uh, those tend to be a little bit soft and they can strip either the screw or the wrench itself. If you get yourself a good set of drivers like these dynamite drivers, it's a very good hardened steel uh, that's sufficient for the average enthusiast. Okay, so we've gone ahead and placed that back in. So now we're gonna go ahead, so everything's tightened in there. We're gonna go ahead and pop the nozzle back on. So I'm gonna just hold the end of the bellow and make sure that I'm pulling and sliding. So I'm really not pulling on the bellow, I'm just, just a slight tug and then push the uh, impeller back. I'm sorry, the pump housing back towards the transom. Because I don't wanna pull that out of the transom, the bellow. We wanna leave it where it's at. There you go, so now it's back in place and it's being firmly held in place only by the bellows. So I will go ahead and take my nut retainer piece and put it back inside. Okay, so I think I'm around where I need to be. I can kind of look inside and line it up. I'll take my screw, place it in there. I'll take my driver. And I'll be able to feel the screw once it comes through, and I'll know whether I need to, there it goes, to grab right away. We want to tighten these kind of in a cross pattern, like you would a wheel in a car, um, on a one-to-one -one car. Obviously, RC cars only have one knot, you know, but go ahead and do a cross pattern. Oh, geez, I got grease on my hands. And I'm just letting the screw pull itself in. Again, I don't want to push through because I may pop that um, nut out of that plastic retainer where it's sitting in and rides in. Okay, now this one didn't grab. So I'm going to pull it out. Might have missed it a little. Sorry if I got my head in the way there. Let's pull this back. I'll try something to do here. These are a little tricky because it's, it needs to be aligned. I think I tightened this one too much. Let me loosen this one up. Okay, there it goes. I felt it shift outward or towards the. What's happening here is the screw is not lining up with the nut. There it goes. That's about the trickiest part of getting this pump nozzle taken on and off. It's just getting those getting those aligned correctly. My mistake was that I tightened up that top screw. I tightened up that top screw too much, where I wasn't allowing it to move and. Grab the screw. So again, we just want to snug. Now if you can turn your impeller housing and not hear it clicking, then you've done that correctly. If it's clicking or if it's rubbing, then you've over tightened these screws. Just go ahead and hand tight them. Now they don't, these don't have to be torqued to a specific uh, number or anything. There is a gasket in there that will prevent water from going back into the hull. So now we want to go ahead and insert these. One trick I like to do is you just put a little bit of grease in the end of each one of these bellows and it allows the two things. Um, I, I like to think it keeps water out. I don't know if that's really the case or not. Uh, other thing is that it uh, allows for easy movement. You see now it moves very easily within the bellow, opposed to the neck of that bellow grabbing the linkage rod and kind of pulling along with it or going moving back and forth with it. Put these back in. If 
I can get this on there without subtle needle nose, then I'm winning. Let me just grab my needle nose, put that on there. I go this tight. Do the steering rod or steering link. And then just so uh, you're aware, one offsets up, one offsets down. Set now. Ball into place here. The ball rotated on me. Here we go. Steering end. All right, there we go. That's in. So I will go ahead and tighten up my servo arm. Typically, what I'd want to do here is uh, power on my receiver, make sure that my steering trim is centered, power on my boat, get my servo to center out. Then I'd go ahead and tighten up the grub screw for the steering servo. That will ensure that my steering is trimmed out. Uh, mechanically and I don't have to mess around with the dials on the transmitter so go ahead and give it full or adjust your trim however you'd like stock is all the way down that keeps the boat as flat as possible on the water uh, and also keeps it from cavitating as it goes through a little bit of rough chop there so last thing we do is we just take our hose and we pop it back on and that's it that was basically the 17 steps um, in a nutshell there isn't much to it much after that Everything is back on. My steering is good. My trim is set. Nothing is touching when I rotate the coupler by hand. So that is how you service the solid shaft on the 23-inch River Jet Jet Boat. 